Hey, what's up YouTube? EXO coming at you here on this extremely bright and sunny morning. I swear it's like 80 degrees outside and we just got ourselves back from the TD8 show earlier this week. So I figured there's no better time than to do a good old fashioned EXO style of review of our Android Double Din. We've been using it the whole weekend. It did pretty well, but it also did some things that I wasn't quite expecting. So let's go ahead and get the lowdown in this video, go through nice and informal, right for YouTube, and uh, hop in the car and check out this Run Gray special over there from GearBest. All right guys, let's go ahead and check her out. All right guys, here we are inside the car and we've got our camera all queued up. Looking at our head unit, I figured this will go on the fly, bit by bit through the menu, pros, cons, and at the end of the video, just talk about the general synopsis of what we think about this damn thing. We've been using it for a little while, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and turn it on see how long it takes to queue up, which I was surprised. Being solid state technology, all solid state drives, it takes a little longer than I'd uh, prefer to boot up, which I added that little special bootloader screen. Uh, you can change it. Nice little custom file there. I thought it was pretty easy to do as well. So it takes just a tiny bit of load up time. Nothing crazy, but I wish it was just a tiny bit less. And just to let you know before we, oh, what the hell? It usually doesn't go right to the radio. That's a first. So let's just go ahead and start with what's on the home screen here. The little interface, Android 4.4, so you're probably pretty familiar with it. You can move all these things on the screen, but what I was kind of disappointed is you can't move this, especially the radio. I'm hardly ever using the radio, so it would be nice to be able to move this icon off the screen. Uh, you have two different music players. I was kind of confused about that, which I'm still kind of a little bit confused on it. You have this music player, which you can get all your internal stuff, which it came with like Britney Spears, S Club 7, the weirdest music. This all was preloaded. So let's go back into the other music. That was the first music app. And then here's the second one with all my music. The other one had the stock stuff loaded and then this one had my stuff loaded, which you can change. Another thing I kind of liked is how the buttons are nice and flush and there's not too much going on with it. Obviously you get Google Maps, the Google Play Store, but you can't download everything from the Google Play Store because I was already limited. I tried to download an upgraded media player, but it wasn't compatible. Obviously, certain things aren't going to be compatible with this, which was kind of a disappointment. You can change the color. Here you go. And it changes the, the illuminated buttons. Let's just go into the settings real quick, get that over with, and then we'll go into the pros and cons. It auto connects to my Wi-Fi pretty easily, and the sound is really, really limited. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but you get simple things right here. Oh, 4.2.2, shit, made a, made a mistake there. I said 4.4, my bad guys. But we got a dual core processor, one gigabyte of RAM, so she's pretty snappy. Now let's talk about some of the things that I like about it. The screen quality is absolutely great. It looks just like a cell phone. The pixel count is really high, uh, the DPI. So if you're looking at stuff on menu screens, the text is really, really clear. It's easy as hell to use. The volume's right here. You can change the tracks on Bluetooth and everything from right here, so that's cool. Connects to the internet really easily. And the GPS, which I haven't used yet, but I did use it just to test it. Um, all that works nice, and I have it actually connected to my backup camera. And YouTube has been pretty nice. I've been able to look up videos on the fly, connected to my hotspot. If I don't have it on my playlist, I can just do YouTube, so that's been cool. Pandora, obviously, and plays DVDs. Now, you may be thinking, shit, EXO, that's all you like about this thing? Those are pretty standard things. Well, I'm sorry to say, well, yeah, that's a lot of all the only reasons why I like this thing, because there's quite a few things that I don't like about it. So let's just go ahead and talk about some of those things. We're gonna be doing some testing just to show you real life examples of each one of the things that I'm talking about. If you were to go into the settings here and go to your sound, ordinarily you'd want some type of crossover for your sound system, either whether it be for your subwoofers for a low pass or your mids and highs with a high pass. We don't have any of that. Nothing of the sort, no crossovers whatsoever. So if you didn't have that, externally running through your RCAs or your amplifier didn't have a really good option for it, you'd be just a little bit screwed. So I really didn't like that. I was doing the testing for the output voltage for the subwoofers. Not only is there just one RCA, but the voltage is about 0.6 volts to one volt if you go into the EQ and max everything out. But I hate doing that, so I obviously brought this down because it did something rather peculiar when I did turn this up, and I'll go through that in just a little bit. The sub output, definitely not on par, so I was very disappointed with that. And then uh, next is the EQ. Oh my god dang. I thought it was going to be a little bit more 
than this, but this quite literally is you adjust the frequency that this is that this is adjusting. So let's just say this is 30 to 80, and then you can only adjust that curve, and you and it's a, a barely any tweaking. So I have all this stuff set to down, and when I really start to jam, I might bring this up a little bit. But what I noticed is something very peculiar happened when I used this option and the sub level up it would affect my mids and highs. It was the weirdest thing. The output from my mids coming over from my speakers would be distorted a little bit when I turned this up. It was having a, a, a an effect on my mids and highs, just my subwoofer output. So we're gonna do some uh, voltage testing at the end of this video to see exactly what was going on because every four or five seconds, it would have this random spike. And the spike was very, very small, but still there nonetheless. And I'll show you that as well. So I'm really anxious to figure out what the hell that problem is and whether or not we can fix it. And another thing that I really didn't like is whenever you go into your navigation, it automatically mutes everything that you're doing. So if you're listening to music, um, and you want to do, you know, have your rear backup camera for a constant um, video source or whatever like that, or use your navigation, it won't let you. It mutes your fucking music. I thought that was the most peculiar thing. And another thing I noticed is that when you're in your Bluetooth mode, let's go ahead, we've already connected to my phone here. There's no way to tell what song you're playing. You can't rewind your song. Uh, you can't you know, see what the artist is, or, you know, I just thought that was really weird. You can't even scroll through. Sometimes when I was playing Bluetooth and I would go home, all of a sudden it would be playing from this source and Bluetooth at the same time. It would be playing from my USB drive connected right there and my Bluetooth. Simultaneous source playing, absolutely no good. You could hear two bass lines going, it was fighting each other. And so I'm like, what the hell, what the hell? I was scrambling to go back in here and be like, stop. But there's no way to exit out unless you go up here, just like an Android phone and exit out of your music and then it will stop playing. So let's go back to our home here and see, it's kind of slow. I'm pushing home and it's, I guess, it's just having a slow react time. So I guess I got to clear out of this. See, that's another thing. It's kind of, you know, it is snappy when you click in an app like this, but sometimes with the UI, the UI can be just a little bit laggy. And then another thing that I guess I can say that I didn't like about it is how my power button is already chipping apart. Just the paint is coming apart. I mean, that's like making mountains out of molehills, but either way, I just wanted to cover all the things. And then the last thing I had an issue with was the head unit w completely turned white uh, twice at the show this weekend. But uh, yeah, the head unit went completely white twice at the show and I had to totally cut power to it and bring it back on for it to work. That's pretty much it, guys. That it doesn't do, you know, much more than that, which is, you know, it's good. I like simple shit, but I also wish it had a little bit more for us as far as crossovers, equalizers, and just having a nice, you know, audio grade head unit. So general synopsis i would would i recommend this head unit to the people who watch my videos uh, you know to tell you the truth i wouldn't recommend it on the whole you know what i'm saying uh that's just my personal opinion my personal preference if you're gonna get a head unit in this type of realm it should be able to do all these things all right guys we got our o scope and our head unit all ready to go we're gonna play some 40 hertz tone at completely full volume our amplifiers are off so everything's gonna be nice and safe and we're gonna plug in our probes to our RCA outputs and see what kind of you know levels we're getting from this thing, just to let you guys see firsthand what we're working with here. So let's turn this on. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Our volume is all the way up. So let's see what we're working with for output and how clean our signal is from this head unit. Like I already mentioned once, there's this really weird peak going on, this really weird spike that I will show you that alters the signal a little bit. Let's check this thing out. So we're at 0.69 volts, but see how I just said 42 hertz randomly? This is a 40 hertz sine wave, 39.9, 40, 42, 40, 39.9, 42, 39.9, 42. Do you see that? Every time this little random spike comes across the screen, I'm gonna zoom into it. It changes the frequency and changes the wavelength. Check it out, oh, hold on. Check it out, ready, here it comes. You gotta pay attention right into here. Oh, you see it? Here it comes. Bam, right there, you see it come, going across? There it is again, right there. I'm gonna have to do this slow-mo. Do it one more time. There it is again. So there's some sort of distortion happening. This is a perfect 40 hertz sine wave, but we're getting peaks of 42 hertz. Right there, bam, 42 hertz. 44, was that 44? Maybe my thumb was blocking it. Something seriously wrong is happening there. 
So let's let's zoom out here. Now let's go to our uh, mids and highs and see what happens when we adjust the sub level because something was altering the mids and highs when we were changing the sub level. All right, I went ahead and plugged in that same connection into our front output. I'm gonna pick like, I don't know, like 500 to 1000 hertz. I'll pick, I'll pick 500 hertz. And let's just go ahead and see what this is doing on 500 hertz with our signal here. Now, I'm expecting something to be slightly malformed because of what I was hearing when I was changing the level of my sub. So right now we're at 0 0.3, 0 fucking three volts. Holy shit, that, that doesn't even seem right. Hold on, let me get a better grip on this damn thing. Holy shit. Look at that, what's going on? That's not 500 hertz. What is going on? 530, 517. What the, f and look at that signal. Look at that fucking signal. What is happening? Oh my God, this is new for me, YouTube. Is I knew something was happening on the bass frequencies, but let's just, hold on guys. Let's go back here. I'm going back into the music here. Let's see if I can sh get this without dropping anything. Go back into the music, start this over, 500 hertz. You clearly see that. 500 hertz, negative five dB, two minutes worth. Now let's turn the fucking volume back up. Well, it's already cranked. And look, 0.3 volts in the signal is absolutely, that's dangerous. That shit, look at that. It's fluctuating 30 hertz from 500 to fucking 530. In fact, I don't even think we're seeing 500 hertz at all. Holy shit, that is so surprising to me, YouTube. Really, really, that is not good at all. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. That's just really disappointing. I mean, I, I really wish I could have said something nice about this thing a little more than I than I did, but this thing is just not up to snuff. Not up to snuff. It's inaccurate. It could pot potentially be dangerous for your shit. You saw all those spikes. That is not good, guys. So, let's just go ahead and click home here, end the video off. Um, you know, that's pretty much it, you guys. So until the next video, this is EXO with the uh, first Android head unit. I'm gonna be definitely switching this out to a Pioneer, um, but that's all in the, in the weeks to come. So make sure you guys stay tuned, and we'll be doing a whole other video on that. Whoa, what just happened? What just happened? <laughs> we'll be doing a whole other video on that, so stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, until the next video, this is EXO signing out. Haha! <laughs>